Folks, be sure to like and subscribe because today we're going to do a little talking about Detroit River Walleye. <laughs> Folks, it's your friend Fishing with Dom, and I have a pair of rods sitting in front of me right now that I am itching to jig the Detroit River with in just a few days. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I've announced it uh, in recent videos, but I'm going to go fish the Detroit River in Windsor with YouTuber Buck Fishes. Be sure to like and subscribe to his pages as well. And we're going to get some walleyes from shore, but first things first, I'm going to show you how I have everything rigged up how we're going to be fishing, and how anglers are generally successful when it comes to jigging some of North America's biggest walleye. First things first, when you're fishing a river as large as the mighty Detroit, you're going to need the proper equipment. When it comes to your rod, first things first, you're going to want a medium heavy because that river is deep and that river has a bit of current to it, especially during the springtime. You're going to want to make sure you've got something that can handle Larger jigs, a lot of the times these might be three-quarter, seven-eighths, but a lot, I'd say most often they're going to be at an ounce or so. That's what a lot of people have been jigging with this year at least. Medium heavy rod. You want a fast action tip, a faster extra fast action tip, because when you're jigging, you're going to be picking that jig up and down off of the bottom, and the first thing that's going to detect a bite is how sensitive your rod is. So if you have a nice sensitive tip to your rod, you're going to be able to feel it a little bit better. And because the tip is so sensitive in a fast or extra fast action, you're going to be able to jack them with the hook set quicker and more effectively because the blank becomes to have less give to it. And especially when you're fishing braided lines, you're going to be able to get a solid hook set on them because that tip is so short you're not going to have any give when you, when it comes to setting that hook. You're going to have that tiny, tiny action of the tip just bent. It's going to feel just a hair different. And immediately when you start picking up on that rod to set the hook, your rod doesn't have to bend that much before your line and the energy of the hook set uh, uh, create a driving force almost to engage those hook points deep into that walleye's mouth. So... Medium heavy rod, fast, extra fast action tip, that's what I like to use. You know, just something really sensitive so I can be able to detect those bites and crank them a good hook set. Your reel doesn't have to be anything too fancy. This is the Elite Max by Abu Garcia. They just sent me this a few weeks ago and I'm actually about to use it for the first time in a few days. And this is spooled up with braid. This is Spiderwire Stealth Camo Series. It is a 20 pound braid but it is the size of a six pound monofilament. Now, 20 pound braid is a little overkill when it comes to vertical jigging, but I had it around and it's the size of a six, so I have a lot of line on here and it's gonna fish very, very well. These are also the jigging setups I'm going to be using on the St. Clair River as well also, and even on the Saginaw River. For all my Eastern Michigan walleye friends, these videos I make about walleye jigging are almost specifically for y'all. But sometimes when the Saginaw River is really high, I'll use a medium heavy. But for the Detroit River, this time of year, it's what you're going to want. So my main line is a 20-pound braid. Guys generally use anywhere between 10, 14, 17, and 20-pound braid just because it doesn't stretch, and it's thinner, and it cuts to the current really, really well, and your bait will swim a little bit more vertically, and you'll be able to feel more bites and you know pop a limit of walleyes in the boat or catch the biggest walleye of your life in no trouble. Now, this is a traditional round ball jig head. You can buy these almost anywhere in Metro Detroit that sells fishing tackle just because this is a, a jigging corner of the country. There's a whole lot going on here throughout the entire year. We have the Detroit River Run. We have the St. Clair River Run that picks up after the Detroit River when that water begins to warm up. And then throughout the entire year, there's walleyes to be caught in both of those rivers. So I've got a... 10 pound fluorocarbon leader tied with a scroggins knot. If you have not yet seen how to tie the scroggins knot, that's how I connect my uh, main line super lines or braids to my fluorocarbon. I'll put the link for it in the description. This is just an ounce round ball jig head. And coming off of the eyelet, I've got a stinger hook. And I always let my stinger hook uh, free flow. I don't skin hook it or anything. So that way in that current, 
when this bait's being jigged and this stinger hook is trailing off of the the eyelet it's connected to, that fish can come up and when he attacks the jig head, he's not only going to attack it, he's also going to slurp it in because that is how fish antinomically feed. And when he brings in that slurp to suck the bait in, he's going to be putting this tiny, tiny size 10 treble hook right in the back of his mouth. So if he doesn't get this hook all too well, I have an insurance policy hanging off the end of it. So stinger hooks are pretty important when it comes to fishing the Detroit River. Now, as far as your bait choices, this is a power bait 4-inch jigging minnow. It's very similar to the Lunker City Fin S minnows. I have, a, I have a big box of those all over there. You don't have to get the elaborate Lunker Cities. You can get the knockoff ones at Frank's Great Outdoors. Uh, you can buy those at uh, fishing shows throughout the year. I've got, that's what my box is full of. But the Lunker Cities, they come in a huge variety of colors. These power baits, I really dig the scent on them too. They have natural colors as well. Minnow baits, split fork tail like that. The Gulp Minnow. Uh, I love the Gulp Minnow, by the way. So I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised I didn't put on a gulp minnow already when it comes to talking about this presentation because I'm going to be fishing with it a lot. And uh, worm baits, the Wyandotte worm, different straight tail worms, very, very popular when it comes to jigging the Detroit River. Now, as far as rod length, six foot six, seven, seven and a half, perfect rod length. Something gets you a little bit away from the boat, it'll, it'll do you good. You'll get a lot of power on your fish with a longer rod and you won't have to worry about tangles around those fishing uh, near you if people are fishing in the boat with you. Oh, an another jigging rod I have right here, this is my medium heavy Abu Garcia Vendetta. I've had this rod for a few years. This is a fast action tip, medium heavy power. And I've got the same setup down here with a fluorocarbon leader, but this is a disc jig, a current cutter style of jig. It is flat on both sides and narrow, so that way, I've explained it before, this jig will cut through the current better and ride a little bit more vertically. When you are fishing in the Detroit River, if you're not a part of the custom uh, jigs available that are more hydrodynamic than the simple round ball jig, a lot of people are really sold on this asset of fishing tackle. I am too. I have that round ball jig tied on because we're going to be casting from shore and we're going to be working them back to us. But when you are vertical jigging out on the boat, I highly recommend getting a bait that flows through the water nice and evenly and it doesn't have too much resistance to push it back. You're going to want to stay as vertical as possible. So that bait stays close to the bottom. You have the least amount of line out as possible and you're just making connection with that bottom. Whenever you feel that tiny tick, just send it to them, give them the beans. Twister tails, worm baits. Uh, I might not fish the twister tail if the current's really bad because this is a whole lot of plastic hanging off the end to drag me back a little bit. But I could make up for the hydrodynamics with the displacement of having a jig that'll cut through the water. So this might not ride all too bad. I'm only going to have to see for myself. And as far as my main line on this rod, this is a, another jigging line I really get down with. This is a 10-pound Berkeley Fireline 8-carrier line. Very, very smooth. This stuff casts very, very well. Extremely sensitive. And I've, I've caught a lot of fish with it. And it's a very sensitive rod. It's a quality... Uh, it's a sensitive line. It's a quality line. And I use it for a reason. It helps me catch fish. It is my lifeline and my telephone line to knowing whether or not I should set that hook or not. But I don't have a stinger hook on here right now. Uh, I don't like to drive around with... My jigs have having stinger hooks hanging off of them. So when I get to the river, I'll be sure to put one on because those fish, they're going to slurp it in, and that stinger hook is going to save you a lot of the time. But all in all, from today's lessons, you're going to want a appropriate jig. It all depends on how you're fishing. If you're drifting jigs from shore, I'd recommend a three-quarter ounce. If you were vertical jigging out on the boat, I'd want at least a seven-eighths or a one-ounce. You might be able to go down to three-quarter if you have a jig that will slice through the current, just like the, this last one I showed you. It's actually the Bass Pro Shop Current Cutter Jig. I'll put a link for it in the description. So get a good jig. Get line that doesn't stretch. Fireline, spider wire, whatever you want. Those are just the two I personally use. But the most important thing I hope you get out of this video, medium heavy powered rod with a fast or extra fast action tip. So you get that sensitivity to feel that fish, and then boom, you sock it to them. Your rod won't have a lot of give into the tip, and you'll be able to 
just send home a hook set from hell and bring in what easily could be a, a, a 10 plus pound walleye. But enough about talking about fishing of fishing walleye for the Detroit River. I'm going to go out and do it now. So stay tuned because within the next couple days, I'm going to have some new content up of me catching walleyes on the dirty Detroit River with buck fishes. I'm excited. We're going to do this. Folks, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, any insight for YouTube video ideas, please let me know. I'd greatly appreciate it. So take care, folks. I'm Fishing with Dom. Bye-bye. Thank you.